Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chula Longcorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing these tutorials to show you how to set up the basics in your space. Today, we'll be going over the respawn point component. With spawn points around your space, you can better control the flow of your space, reward the player for completing difficult areas or making good progress, and give the player new life after inflicting them with death. <laughs> to demonstrate the spawn point component, I've selected the Spooky Village, a new space added in October in celebration of Yahaha Halloween. The spooky vibe has been a lot of fun. Spawn points work differently than the other components we've been going over in these tutorials. In Yahaha, all space templates have a default spawn point, including the base template. Other than this default spawn point having some unique behavior, all spawn points in a space work in concert to provide various kinds of spawning and respawning behaviors. While we're here, let's set the character rotation Y to 90 and move the default spawn point down to the bottom of the Explorer dialog to make our work a bit easier. To get started, let's get a couple of pre-built spawn assets set around our spooky scene. In the resource box, these are called gear respawn points. Let's head over to the graveyard and place one in there. That seems like a good place to bring the player back to life. Let's set it to a checkpoint and set up its trigger like this. Now, let's place the other spawn point in the far back corner by this lonely little house. That's not spooky at all. Let's set it to be a checkpoint also, setting its trigger like so, and set it up as an area spawn with an area range of three meters. The area setting will spawn the player within our chosen area around the spawn point's location. Now, we're going to rename the spawn assets to make them easier to identify. Also, as you can see, the pre-built spawn point has an effect connected to it. You can choose to keep that or remove it, whatever works best for your space. We're going to delete the VFX object on both these spawn points, just so that they don't interfere with the camera. You can also change the asset's appearance, allowing you to better match your spawn points to your space, which in my humble opinion is pretty cool. Okay, next let's turn an object in the space into a spawn point by adding the respawn point component to it. Let's select the path section here close to the house on the hill. Hmm, I don't think I want to go in there. Anyway, let's set the component to be both a spawn point and checkpoint, and set its character rotate Y to negative 120, which will cause the player to spawn facing down the hill toward the village. Finally, I'd like to demonstrate how to create an empty or invisible spawn point, since it's a popular thing to want in a space. To do this, we make sure nothing is selected, then create an empty object. Let's name the empty object empty spawn. Now, we simply add the respawn point component to it and set it up. Let's set this to both a spawn point and a checkpoint, like the path selection. But, let's set it as an area spawn with a range of 2 meters. Okay, that does it for setting up our spawn points. From here, we have to work in a different area of the studio interface in order to configure our spawn behavior. To do that, we will have to open the Gameplay dialog. Here, in the General tab, we find the Respawn settings. I went over these briefly in the Editor tutorial, but I'll do so again here. See? I told you we'd get back around to this in another video. Under Mode, we have Random, which chooses a random spawn point. Default, which always uses the default spawn point. Nearest, which chooses the nearest spawn point, and checkpoint, which activates the checkpoint behavior of the spawn points. We also have the time setting, which sets the length of time it takes a player to respawn into a space, and audio file, which allows us to customize the sound which plays when a player spawns in a level. For this level, we'll choose a time of three seconds, and we'll choose the spooky sounding vocal file we got in the asset library. 
Now, let's demonstrate how each of the spawn types work in turn. First though, let's be mean to the player and set up a series of jack-o'-lantern traps for them all around the scene. <laughs> that way, we can kill them over and over, just to show how respawning works. Paul Widow Poya. <laughs> okay, on to the spawn settings. Let's start with the default setting. Interestingly enough, named default. No matter what other respawn point components are set as spawn points, this setting will always respawn the player at the built-in spawn point. Now for the random respawn mode. This is the default spawn mode and requires you to have at least one other respawn point component set as a spawn point. It will then choose randomly between each spawn point, including the default spawn point, and spawn the player there. If you recall, we set up two. So, as you can see, in our space here, it will randomly spawn between the three spawn points. For respawn, it chooses between all spawn points and can be good if you want random respawning in your space. Next, on to the respawn mode of nearest. While we're here, let's also change the respawn time to 5 seconds to demonstrate how respawn time works. As you can see, nearest will cause your players to respawn at the nearest spawn point to where you killed them off, and the change in time forces them to wait longer to respawn. Be careful with this one, because if you use it in a series of obstacles and the player is closer to a spawn point which is further along in your space, they could spawn there, skipping parts of your carefully crafted torture devices. And we usually don't want to do the player any favors. It could ruin our reputation as sadistic designers. Finally, let's take a look at the checkpoint respawn mode. We'll also change the respawn time back to 3 seconds for the sake of expediency. Checkpoint is a little bit different than the other modes. As you recall, when we set up the spawn points as checkpoints, we also set up a sort of trigger box around or nearby the spawn points. This area is the trigger which activates its corresponding spawn point as the current checkpoint and will cause the player to respawn at that spawn point until another checkpoint trigger is activated. And boom, we respawn at the correct checkpoint. This kind of behavior is great for progression through obstacles as it allows the player to make progress through an area as they hit each checkpoint and not have to spawn back at the default spawn point every time we kill them off. That way, we show them just enough mercy to keep them coming back for more punishment. As you can see, the respawn point component is used in conjunction with the respawn gameplay settings to allow you to control how and where players respawn into your spaces. They can reward player progress move story forward, and randomize player interaction with a space and each other. That's all for this tutorial, but we have several more elements to cover. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials. Also, be sure to visit us on Discord and in the forums to discuss space creation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.